Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Gaming Tidal.com video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with Intel, specifically Brian Kranich, who is Intel's CEO. Well, actually, former CEO, because he has resigned from his position. And Robert Swan, who was the chief financial officer, has now taken over Brian's position as an interim CEO. So what the heck is going on here? Well, it's for a past relationship, at least that's the official line, with someone else within Intel's uh, organization. So basically, interpersonal relationships within the company are frowned upon, particularly for upper management. And therefore, because Brian was in um, violation of this policy, he has been let go of. I'm not 100% certain if I buy that, actually. Um, I am not part of his life, and I was not in the meeting where he decided to resign or was fired, whatever way you want to look at it. But I am somewhat suspicious that it could not be 100% uh, that reason. After all, Intel recently have had a bit of a kicking. We're actually going to be going into another kicking that Intel have been getting from AMD on the Epic side of things in just a moment. And first of all, of course, the 10NM process. I'm not even going to say anything more other than the 10NM process because we all know what's going on with the 10NM process, so I'm not going to reiterate it. Then, of course, you've got the Ryzen situation. Even if you take... Uh, the 10NM thing, and you said, well, you know, in isolation, that's bad. It's made considerably worse because AMD is being super duper aggressive when it comes to their own CPU roadmap. We're going to get further into this when I discuss Rome and Epic in just a moment, but suffice to say that Intel are fighting on a couple of fronts here. They're fighting on the mainstream sector, that would be desktops, low power devices, and those type of things, but also the server market, not just in x86, but don't forget ARM itself, and you know the power architecture is not going away anytime soon. And ARM is looking to get into the server market, you know, the, the actual ARM processors, and it's not, once again, like the power CPUs have been completely relegated to non-existence, that's not even slightly the case. So Intel can't afford to just rest on its you know hind legs and just say well it's okay we don't mind what's going on here no they obviously have a, a war to fight so you've got that situation plus of course a couple of pr disasters i think we can all agree that the 28 core 5 gigahertz display was just it wasn't good um, as i said to you uh, it, well, as I said to viewers before, like the issue I had wasn't that the fact that the system was overclocked. I had no qualms about that at all. I had no issues the fact that they were using what was essentially server hardware because they could have said very simply it was a proof of concept that um, you know everything was just uh, pretty much being tested. That it was early stages and they were overclocking the processor just to show how far it could go and. Whatever verbiage they wanted to use, but use, but to say that they then forgot to say this stuff on stage, it was just really bad. And I think it's fair to say that Brian has had a couple of uh, hiccups in his management, and that plus the Spectre and uh, Meltdown thing, where of course just uh, before that information went public, he sold a lot of his shares. That certainly was not a good look for him, considering he's the CEO of the company. It it basically says that I have no confidence <laughs> over the next several uh, months of the price of the, my company's shares. Being honest, I have nothing against him at all, and I do wish him luck in his future. And if it truly is because of an interpersonal reason, which it could well be, that would suck. <laughs> um... And, you know, I'm not, obviously it's a company policy, but I just don't, you know, I, I think it should really be judged on the merits of your job. And it was a consensual relationship, so there was no, like, you know, any allegations there. It was a completely consensual relationship. So I do understand that it was company policy, but still it does kind of suck if that's the case. But it is what it is. In a rather fascinating article on nextplatform.com, I'll link it in the video description, AMD have told us that Rome is not designed to compete with Cascade Lake. Instead, it is designed to compete with Ice Lake. This could be devastating for Intel in a couple of ways, but let's analyze the situation. So right now, Zen is the CPU architecture which is being found in Epic processors. And with that 
uh, architecture, AMD are wrangling off a significant amount of market share from Intel. In fact, Brian Kranich himself, in one of his final statements for the company, actually was speaking with investors and said that, you know, within a year, AMD could actually take 20% of the market share from Intel in the server space. Now think of it this way. The last time that AMD were competitive was back in the early 2000s with Opteron. And that was a significant processor. Like the first generation got around five-ish percent of market share of memory serves, and then subsequent iterations improved on that. But then Intel just decimated them. And now they're at like 0.02 or 0.03, just basically say 0% of market share. They're at nothing. Uh, but now Intel have just started to lose that market share that they had. And AMD are just clawing it back because of a very aggressive processor roadmap. And there's a couple of reasons behind that. The first is that the single socket solution, but also the performance, the sheer core count they're offering, which is combined with really high IO. Not only do they have a significant amount of memory bandwidth, but they also have a lot of PCIe lanes connected to the CPU, which means that if they're in a HPC environment or whatever, anything which requires a lot of IO and communication to the CPU, hint a lot of stuff in servers, then you're basically doing pretty well because of the sheer number of PCIe lanes which are found in Epic. At Computex 2018, Lisa Su affirmed that the company are not going to be releasing Epic based on Zen Plus. They're going to be skipping that and instead focusing their engineering efforts on Zen 2. And this is going to form the basis of Rome. And here's where things get very, very bad for Intel. So we know a couple of details about Zen 2. For one, it's based on the four, the for one, it's based on the 7NM process. And for two, AMD have confirmed that there will be all around improvements in the architecture. So we can assume that that's going to be clock speed. We can assume that's going to be IPC. We can assume that they might even be supporting PCIe 4.0 and, you know, maybe AVX improvements and cache improvements and whatever else they can throw onto the chip. It's going to be there. Now, the chip is expected to be sampling in the second half of this year. In fact, uh, Lisa Sue was holding the darn thing in her hand and she said, you know, they're planning to send it to people already and their partners are very eager because it can slot into current Epic motherboards. But here's the bad thing. Here's where things get from bad to worse for Intel. Not only that, but the processor itself is expected to launch next year. Now, here's what Intel have to counter with. Cascade Lake which is great, you know, Cascade Lake, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, the problem is, AMD in the interview, um, that I, as I said, is linked in the video description, have confirmed that they are not aiming to take on Cascade Lake. Their design was that they assumed the worst possible competition that they could come up against from Intel. They assumed the worst case scenario. They assumed they would be facing Ice Lake. And according to Forrest of AMD and the rest of the engineering team, they basically assumed that Intel would be the most aggressive and ruthless they could possibly be. And they had created the silicon to take on that processor. So you're going to say to yourself, well, what does that mean? Well, essentially, AMD are going to be pitting Rome, which is based on Zen 2, against a processor which they assumed to be Ice Lake, but it's not. It's going to be Cascade Lake. So in other words, it's possible they could have a, essentially a generational advantage. So, okay, I'm talking about the server market. How does that benefit us, you know, gamers? Because I realize most people don't necessarily own server farms. They don't necessarily work in server environments. Well, just think of this. What architectures have Intel got in the on the CPU side of things for the moment. It's possible we could see Ice Lake in 2019. After all, there have been those engineering samples we keep seeing, but even if they were Ice Lake, the problem is AMD have Zen 2, and it looks to be competing favorably with Ice Lake. So the very best case scenario, AMD could be trading blows with Ice Lake. And there are those rumors that AMD could be increasing the core count on the mainstream side of things. And I'm somewhat skeptical whether we're gonna be seeing 16 cores 
but I definitely wouldn't be surprised if we saw 12. There's a couple of reasons for this. One, AMD are just being hyper aggressive right now. I mean, seriously, I don't know what lit a fire under their butt, but they really are going aggressive as hell. The second reason is that, well, they don't want Intel to then be able to say, well, we've got the same number of cores of our competition. That's just not a good look for AMD. They want to be the core company. It's, it's basically a meme at this point. And, you know, the third thing is that when you look at Threadripper, Threadripper 2, that is, of course, 32 cores, 64 threads, I don't necessarily know if they'd want that much of a gulf between the two products. Obviously, I'm basing this on the first generation of Threadripper versus the first generation of Ryzen, so it's possible that AMD could decide to increase the gap there very much like Intel have. After all, you can get like an 18 core versus like a a four core of the mainstream, and then obviously that's bumped up to six, so it's six versus 18. Of course, I'm referring here to Skylake X versus um, Kaby Lake, and then subsequently Coffee Lake, which obviously Coffee Lake is now being uh, increased to eight. So I still don't think Intel, um, sorry, AMD would want that, 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 that huge core disadvantage there. So am I saying that Intel are doomed? Am I saying that they have no chance? No, 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 no. Intel have a lot of R&D cash, and we do know that Jim Keller went to Intel for the purposes of designing a new processor architecture. And we know that that's, a, you know, for the future, and we know that it's gonna be high performance. But what I am saying is Intel, they're not gonna go bankrupt. They're not gonna be, you know, doomed. But what they could do is lose a significant amount of mind share, which is obviously not good, and market share, which is also not good. So I'm saying that, Intel could be in a position where they've just been basically set back several years of progress, which I don't necessarily think is a bad thing. And I don't mean that from the perspective of like AMD good, Intel evil. I more refer to this as like, well, perhaps it'll bring some competition back into the marketplace. Oh, and by the way, I'm not blaming Intel here for the stagnant, stagnantation, excuse me, of, um, the marketplace. I, I blame the lack of competition, not on Intel and the performance increases necessarily just on Intel, but also on AMD. Perhaps AMD are even more to blame. After all, if the excavator architecture had been better thought out and we'd have seen high competition there, Intel would have been forced to respond. Everyone's quick to point out four cores, eight threads, four cores, eight threads, including myself. I'm not, you know, absolving myself of that. But at the end of the day, do you think Intel would have continued to do that if we'd have seen AMD just say, okay, well, here's this processor which has better performance? Of course, Intel would have responded in kind because that's just how competition in the marketplace works. I do wonder though, the final performance of Zen 2. I don't know the clock speeds, obviously I can guess, but I wouldn't be surprised if we do see a minimum of the high four gigahertz mark, like let's say 4.7 to 4.8. I wouldn't even be surprised if we saw five gigahertz. It's possible. It's too difficult to predict because we don't know what other changes they're going to make on the silicon. And of course, 7nm on such a large chip, there's not a whole lot of information we have on that yet to really make a good predictor. But if AMD can nail down around 4.8 gigahertz, at minimum, and they make other changes to improve IPC, and they just pretty much get the platform down, as I think they will. I mean, it's not like they've not been executing well so far. I do suspect that we as gamers are going to benefit just as much. And don't forget, if you're still somewhat skeptical, Intel can, with their own uh, MCM strategies, continue to increase core count. The problem is, so can AMD. And at the end of the day, even if Intel can release a 28 core processor or, AM, or even a higher number of pro, um, higher core count processor, in, AMD can do the same and it will have, at least in theory, a performance advantage. From what we understand, uh, Rome should release in a 48 core uh, processor. And then we could even see up to 64 cores on a single CPU, which is absolutely bonkers. That is just nuts. 64 cores, 128 threads for a single processor on one socket. I mean, that's just gargantuan levels of performance. Imagine 256 threads just from two processors. That is absolutely crazy. It doesn't seem too long ago that we were in the days of like, you know, two processors equals two threads. 
like those dual socket boards everyone was lusting after back in the days of like the the, the Celerons and the Pentium 3s everyone was lusting after those dual socket boards and now of course it's like well one socket equals you know dozens of threads it's kind of mental since about 2016 the price of DRAM has become quite ludicrous especially in 2017 it just reached a massive peak and companies such as SK Hynix, Samsung and Micron were accused of price fixing. Now this essentially meant that they were limiting supply to increase the price and were basically working together because they owned 90% of the market share. Well, investigators over in China are not very happy about this and are currently seeking to sue the companies. The Chinese antitrust regulators have actually calculated a figure between 800 million and 8 billion, I just want to repeat that, 8 billion US dollars. And this is based upon the sale of DRAM between the years of 2016 and 2017. Now, I think we can all agree that that's an ouch. On top of that as well, China are looking to push its own memory fabrication. So its own companies locally in China are going to be producing DRAM and no doubt that that is going to also impact the likes of Samsung's bottom line because obviously that memory eventually is going to start to be sold overseas. But of course you don't need to necessarily be too sad for these companies. After all the memory business is going to be remaining rather lucrative for some time. Hint, hint. But it is nice to see, I guess, that this is happening, assuming it is a genuine conspiracy. I mean, obviously, if they're not guilty, then that kind of sucks. But, of course, a couple of these companies have pled guilty to this in the past, so it's going to be interesting to see what exactly happens in this uh, antitrust lawsuit. Anyway, with all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Normal stuff, if you have, like, share, comment, and subscribe. Um, there's a lot of stuff coming up on the channel over the next a couple of days, including multiple reviews uh for those asking about the uh, ray tracing on the xbox it's now recorded i'm in the process of editing it it's just been a little bit delayed today because i was waiting for um his package to be delivered plus a couple of other bits and pieces uh so yeah but it is being edited so that should be up tomorrow and so uh thanks very much for watching take care of yourselves bye for now